So far we've covered a one sample t-test and repeated measures t-test. There's one more type or flavor of t-test called an independent samples or between subjects t-test, between groups t-test. And for this we have two separate groups and we want to compare the means between the two groups. And the two groups can have different numbers of people. We're just concerned with having one group exposed to one level of treatment, like a placebo, and the other group exposed to another level of treatment, such as a drug. Okay, you can imagine this is used pretty widely in drug testing experiments. In this case, let's say that we have two groups of people. We have a group of six who are exposed to a placebo, and we have a group of four who get a drug. And these numbers, let's say that they represent anxiety levels. We have a hypothesis that taking the drug should lead to reduced anxiety. So here are our hypotheses. I have this subscript D to represent drug. This isn't referring to difference like it was in the previous video. It refers to drug. The null hypothesis states that the means between the two groups should be equivalent. Okay, there should be no effect based on introducing a drug. The alternative hypothesis, or H1, is that the symptoms of anxiety for the people taking the drug, on average, should be lower than the people who are taking the placebo. So M subscript D is going to be less than M subscript P. For our calculations, first we take the mean of each of these two columns. So the mean anxiety level for the placebo, listen to me, placebo group and the mean anxiety levels for the drug group. All right? So for the placebo group, we take each of these scores and from that we subtract the mean placebo score. Right? You've seen this operation before. It's to lead to a sum of squares so we get an idea about the variance of that group. All right? So we take the difference between each of those scores and the mean and then we take the sum of each of those differences to get the sum of squares. If we add up all of the values in this column. We do the same thing for the drugs, people in the drug group. We take the mean, we subtract that from each score in the drug group. Okay, then we take each of these differences, we sum them up, we square them, sum them up, and we get the sum of squares for the drug group. Okay, so I have them labeled here SS subscript D, sums of squares for the drug group, and SS subscript P for sum of squares for the placebo group. Going back down here, remember these are my parameters and statistics for my groups. Here I have the number of people in the drug group, which is four, number of people in the placebo group, which is six, and the degrees of freedom for each, which is simply n minus one. The only difference here is now I calculate something called degrees of freedom total, which is going to be eight. So I can either sum up both of these degrees of freedom, or I can just take the total number of subjects and subtract by the number of groups which is 2. All right. I have an alpha threshold of 0.05 and since this is a one-tailed test I hypothesize that taking the drug is going to reduce anxiety. The t-critical is negative 1.86. All right. Okay. So now all you need to do is take an estimate of the variance between these two groups. And to do that we take a weighted average of the variance called the pooled variance. I have this notated here S squared subscript P. Don't get that confused with placebo. This stands for pooled. All right. So what we do here is we take the sum of squares, we add them up across both groups, and we divide by the total degrees of freedom, or N minus 2. All right. So we insert those numbers, 178 plus 30, divide by 8, and we get a pooled variance of 26. The next step is where we actually want to, like before, have some estimate of the standard mean, or sorry, standard error of our distribution of means, mean differences in this case. And importantly, what we're going to do is we're going to weight the group that has more subjects or observations more heavily than the group that has fewer observations. We do this because a group that has more observations or individuals is probably going to have less spread in its estimate of the mean. All right, so we take S squared for the placebo group, S squared, and 
getting these mixed up again. Okay. We take the pooled variance, we divide it by the number of people in the placebo group, and we add that to the pooled variance, divide that by the number of people in the drug group. Right. And we take the square root of that to get an estimate of the standard error for these differences of means. Okay. Same thing as before where we're building up a distribution of means, now this is the difference in the distributions. We do that, we get a value of 3.29. Okay. Conceptually, this is similar to standard error. What we've been doing with z-tests and t-tests, all those other flavors of t-tests. To calculate t, we're going to now take the difference between the means of these two groups because we want to compare them against each other, see if there is an effect. And we take that difference and we quantify it in terms of standard error of the difference. Right. We do that, it's 40 minus 49, I'm getting the numbers from down there, divided by this S diff that we just calculated, and I get a T value of negative 2.73. I compare that to my T critical threshold, it's more extreme than that, so I'm going to go ahead and reject the null hypothesis. When you do this, for the T table, look up the column with degrees of freedom and the total degrees of freedom.